And I'm guessing that Ray had uh, to uh, to track down you because you end up talking to everybody in the hockey so hallway. So here's what happened. So he welcome says, Ray Ferraro from ESPN. Nice to see you. Good to see you, He Brian. says, meet me in the media room. Well, Come that, get me in the media room. You know, it, pre-pandemic, what the media room was is the meal room where we would sit down yes. and all enjoy ourselves. So... He's the only one allowed in the Sabres cafeteria now having a good old meal, just oh, saying he enjoys it. was himself. good. Uh, you know what? I got to say, those players today have no idea, honestly, how lucky they are. I know. Like to, m maybe they understand a little bit, but to go in there post-practice and there's your lunch and, and it's really terrific and you're like, oh, this, we did not have this. The whale. If we had the, bagels, we were lucky. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, I'm not with cream not, cheese. This cream is cheese not even. Extra. This is not even an exaggeration. When we were in Atlanta, the players had to put a fund together. Yeah. And somebody had to stop to buy bagels uh, in the morning. Oh my God. They didn't even provide bagels for us. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, <laughs> that's unreal. So that's Atlanta. I get that. Uh, when I left Buffalo and to oh. Philly, we had bagels in the morning, which was a great Kent Hitchcock story. How he was trying to lose weight. And he walked in and says, today I'm only going to have a half a bagel. And he walked out. Well, 45 minutes later, he comes back thinking that the players have changed around. <laughs> says, today I'm only going to have a half a bagel. And he walks out and did that four times. <laughs> Just take the two bagels and, and go and be yeah. done with it. So. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, it's funny you, uh, you ended up there, literally, and were... You know, seeing the the great benefits of, you know, the staff that works behind the scenes and, you know, quite literally caters to the players with these right. meals. Because I ran in, you would remember Carol, yep. who works back there, and I ran it <clears throat> pandemic, right? Like, you don't see people forever and ever. Right. Carol is 83, and she has been doing this for Unreal. almost, a, and she is the most amazing woman. And it was just so great to run into her the other day. I'm like... Holy cow. <laughs> like, I don't think, I think we sometimes, unfortunately, and in this case because of a global situation, we can lose perspective and, and lose the, the touch of reality that we typically see here on a daily basis. Well, I was in Toronto on uh, Tuesday. I walk into the, to the media room, and there was five writers there. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen them in, I don't know, 18 months. Wow. And I was like, uh -huh. like you yeah. know, it was so awesome to see them. The same conversations you have on a text or whatever, but you... You lose the human interaction. We've all lost it. And, and man, as things are starting to open up, and in Canada we're a little bit behind, but, like, as they're starting to open up, man, it's so great to see people. Marty, I can't even remember the last time that, that I saw you. I, I want to no. say it was a trade deadline. Yeah. And, and that was a quick... It was know. two years ago, trade deadline, right before the pandemic, I yeah. believe. And then... I went back to the studios at TSN one time since then. It was free agent last summer when things opened up a little bit. Yeah, but I was at home. You I, were at I home. Did, yeah. And then I think I'll be there on the 21st. So in studio. In studio. So they're well, still make working sure you put your, Make sure you put your meal order in early. Because I know. I got the email. You got the email? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> uh, listen, let's, uh, we could do this for the next two hours. Let's talk hockey a little bit. Have you ever been in a situation where a player like Jack Eichel and what happened returns home or either you were with a team that had that player going back home or even yourself? Like you got, you moved a few well, times, but. Well, when I came back, I don't know that anyone noticed really, you know, I'm not like this. I mean, like this is, you know, I mean, this is, is something. Um, I, I was never, um, never had a player of the magnitude or, or wasn't involved in a yep. game of the magnitude of this. The, the, there's a couple of difficult things, I think, to it. Is one is, if you're one of the Sabers, you got to get, you got to get your head around that you're not playing Jack Eichel, you're playing Vegas. Mm -hmm. The other is, you're going to watch him, because he looks different in that uniform. It's the first time you've seen him in the uniform, and you're kind of watching him in the game. You would anyway, even if you played Jack Eichel, you don't know him. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, yeah, now you like, watch. Oh, how you does Jack Conor McDavid? Yeah. You watch him. Yeah. 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 How's, how's Jack look? How's he looking? How's he? You know. And so it's gonna. It's really odd from that perspective. Yeah. For him, I mean, I don't know Jack Eichel, but I know if if I were him, that what I want to do more than anything tonight is score. Oh yeah. Like I, I am. First time I went back to Hartford. First time I went back to the island. Uh, you know, I wanted to score, and when I did. Uh, the, uh, with the Rangers, I went back. I scored the first game with the Islanders. It felt like I'd scored five goals. Yeah. Like, it just felt so good. And so, you know, I know there's lots of talk. How's everybody going to react in here tonight? And 
you're the fans are the fans, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's an emotional connection. And so what I assume is going to happen is they're going to boo him when he touches the puck, and they're going to cheer him in the video, and then they're going to boo him when he touches the yeah. puck. And I think that's all fine. Mm-hmm. And because I think the appreciation for what he tried to do, what he did do here, he's a fantastic player. The end yeah. was was the end. I mean, th- mm-hmm. there's a reason it's called the end, because it is. And rarely does the end go where everybody's like, oh, that was all great. Yeah. yeah. There's anything. not a lot of, there, there's some happy ending in movies, and, you know, you mm. saw some around the National Hockey League where yeah. guys win cup, put it over their head, retire, right? Yeah. Uh, Peyton Manning wins Super Bowl, retires. Like, yeah. it happens. Um, but for a lot of other players, it's not that way. The uh, end is not that way. Yeah. yeah, I'm intrigued, Ray. I think, um, I think there's going to be a distinct difference among the fans tonight, and I think it's going to be very vocal both ways. I think yeah. there are going to be a lot of people in favor of Jack and cheering everything that he does, and then I think there's going to be the expected, and it's not just a Jack thing. It's typical of almost any star player, but especially in a circumstance like this where he was dealt, um, yeah, there's going to be booing. I mean, I don't know. It's good for the atmosphere for me. Like, I, I, I don't mind it. I mean, obviously, from the Sabre fan standpoint, they just... they. They want to see their guys like Tuck and, and Krebs have, have good nights and, and continue along yeah. here and making a difference. You know, we just talked to Kevin Adams, and, and uh, he said something that I, I hadn't really thought about, but I know he said it before, but I just thought it was like it, it's just perfect kind of sums up where everything is at this moment, and that is you can't, you can't forget the last 10 years. You have to try to learn why those 10 years happened but you can't live in it either. Mm-hmm. And Jack Eichel's part of that last 10 years. And so you can remember drafting Jack and being thrilled and making him captain and seeing some of the terrific years that he, really terrific years he had. I mean, he's a game changer mm-hmm. player, but you have, to, you have to say, okay, that was then. And now here we are, we're here. We have Peyton Krebs, who's gonna be a really good player. Mm-hmm. Alex Tuck, who is, kind of changed I think a lot of the air mm-hmm. around here oh, yeah. with big time with his ability but also with the way that he is mm-hmm. and then you've got a first round pick coming like the return is significant and so you can bemoan that he's not here and you don't have a centerman like him or whatever whatever but this is where you are and it's it's not a terrible place the toughest part for Buffalo and its fans right now are is the the old saying of draft and development, it sounds beautiful. It's mm-hmm. wonderful. we got to draft. we got to develop. Development takes time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The draft happens in one day. Then you get a bunch of kids, yep. and they can't play because they're too young or they're in college or whatever it is, and it takes time. And then you get to 21 years old, and, like, you know, people were, you know, kicking Rasmus Dahlin in the shins, and you're, he's in his fourth year, and you're like, oh, he's 22. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, Adam Fox started at 23. Yeah. Like, it, it, it matters. Yeah. And so that's, the I think, the toughest part is you got to wait, <clears throat> but that 10 years is still here. It hangs yeah. around you like a an anvil. Well, what about that week, though, that the Sabres are having? They played Sam Reinhardt on Monday, and Florida is, like, roaring, right? Yeah. And then you got Vegas and Ico, and Vegas is one of the better teams in the Western Conference when healthy. And then they go play Toronto at the Heritage Classic on Sunday, and the Leafs are way ahead of where the Sabres are. Yeah. And... But they got their first round pick in Matthews and they got Marner and they got those guys where where Buffalo is still waiting to get going. Like it has to be hard for Kevin Adams and, uh, you know, the Pagulas and everybody involved and in the players, knowing that all of this is inside of seven days. It's a lot of pressure. It's a it's it's a lot because the spotlight hits on top of you and there's nowhere to run and hide. I mean, like you. You can't sort of participate in these things. Like Sunday, the game to watch yep. is Toronto and Buffalo and Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter where you live. In the, like, did you watch the outdoor game in Nashville? Yeah. Like, I didn't really care who was playing. I wanted to watch it. Mm-hmm. And that's, there's going to be the same type of eyeballs on that. Tonight, there's, I think there's 14 games. I'm telling you, a lot of people are going to check in to see how Jack Eichel does in oh, Buffalo. Yeah. So there's nowhere for them to hide. And so you, you get hardened a little bit. I think the more you get to do it, but it's not an easy week. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> you look at the teams that they're playing, it's not like they're little minnows around the league, right? 
they can all score. They can, you know, even though Vegas is having some trouble with it right now. But Well, their injuries, Ray, are, are, are pretty significant. And I know what we just lived through with Tampa and Kucherov and the cap and all that stuff. But honestly, like, I'm sorry. Mark Stone's not vacating a, a season just to, to make way for Correct. somebody, you know. Yeah. And, and, and God bless anybody who's dealing with back issues because they are not fun. Yeah. And uh, But uh, on top of it now, I mean, just not having had Martinez for so long on that yeah. blue line and now McNabb and, you know. Um, Leonard. Uh, Leonard, the Leonard latest. Out. Yeah, and, and Riley Smith tonight. And, yeah, yeah. like, I mean. Oh, is this, Riley Smith out tonight? Uh, he yeah. is apparently out tonight. Yeah. Oh, good, just so. what they need. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's been their most consistent. <laughs> yes, 100%, you know. I, I asked Pete DeBoer back back there I said uh, have you ever had a season like this and he's like never mm -hmm. he said never never have, I, have we had has he had as a coach a season where it's just one after another now Pacioretty's back he's been out a couple of times this year mm -hmm. uh, Carlson was out um, Jan Mark is on IR right now at the beginning of the year um, well, into November he had he had had COVID early and he had some of those long hauler symptoms oh. and he was still playing as best as he could and he's like, yeah, I can play. But they were like, he'd play. And then the next day, they're like, he can't practice. Right. And he's like, but I can play. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't so bad that he was debilitated. But, like, they had no players. Mm -hmm. And so it's, um, you and know. We, we reached 110 goalies a couple of weeks ago, by the way. Alex Taylock with uh, San oh, Jose. Yeah. So, so it was 110. 110, 110 goalies yeah. now. Like, yeah. I mean, this we were, is crazy. We were in the, high, the league was in the high 90s last year, and that was a new record. And, and so we're at 110 now with still 30 games to go for a lot of it's teams. It's a weird like, year for everybody yeah. and yeah. trying to fill in rosters. And then you have the AHL that are trying to fill rosters yep. because of it, like Rochester's dealing with it. And then mm -hmm. imagine being in the East Coast Hockey League and having to fill rosters. Yeah, they're there playing too. with 13 guys, 14 guys. And they're crazy. picking up yeah. guys. Go, like, go through an ECHL stat pack right now. And the X beside everybody because they're no longer on that team or in the right. league because they just have to keep bringing guys up, bringing guys and well, like you're at 39 well, to 45 guys deep on the ECHL yeah. rosters. Yeah. Well, Tom Fitzgerald said the other day. I saw this quote and I just laughed. He's so they've they've gone virtually the same goaltending thing. Yeah. In Jersey yeah. as as you guys have here. Yep. And uh, he said, you know, when the sixth guy has played really well for us, he didn't say Nico Dawes. He said <laughs> the, the sixth, sixth guy. guy. And I'm like, he must just <clears throat> be exhausted. Yeah. By, and can you yeah. imagine, so the cap person mm -hmm. or persons that are doing this and trying to figure it out daily, okay, well, we can't call that guy up because he makes uh, $88,000 too much. We can't yeah. have him. And so we got to, and, and they're trying to field a roster. And mm -hmm. it's a, it seems forever ago that this, this season started. Never mind. Agreed. The agreed. Yeah. Like, and then, and then, to the point of Jack and his return, like the, it's one thing to move off of a superstar, yep. but Jack's final year here wasn't good. It was interrupted. It was like yeah. it wasn't the same as we'd been seeing. Jack had been progressing every year, more points, more points, more points, and then he got snake bitten goal wise, and then clearly the injury was hampering. Right. So it, it feels like so long since we saw Jack at his best, right. and then it, you're right. Like it, everything just seems extended here. What like, happened in October? I right? don't remember. No, no idea. I so I did Vegas um, or Vegas. Seattle was in uh, Toronto on uh, yep. on yep. Tuesday, so. I, I'm, you know, my wife was working for Seattle at the time, and I said, uh, you know, at the start of the year, and so I, I say to her uh, Tuesday night after the game, I said, it just clicked when I was getting ready to do the game. I'm like, when Seattle played their first game as a franchise, the day before, six guys went into COVID protocol. Yeah. They were just getting started. Yeah, remember? First game. Remember six Alex guys. Barry Boulay getting yeah. claimed on waivers, and then he was only there short, and then he left, and yeah. But, but I said... It, it just occurred to me that was this year. Yeah. Like, it seemed like that. Yeah, Seattle doesn't seem like they're in their first year anymore. No, and I'm like, <laughs> six guys, COVID. Oh, yeah, that was October of this year. It's been, a, it's been a wild time for all of us. It feels a little bit more normal. It really does. It's, you know, like as I said, I'm up in Canada. It's nice to see we can get into buildings with fans again, mm -hmm. and you feel the energy and the... I always used to think, like, I used to think it was a crock, guys, when, when people would say, oh, you know, we play for the fans. I'm like, no, you don't. You play for your teammates. You play for <laughs> your paycheck. Your, yeah, your paycheck. <laughs> like, you pay for your career. And then the fans weren't there. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm not even kidding. I was like, I, I can't believe I missed it by that much. Yep. Like, wow. without the people there, it doesn't matter how good the players are. Like, the energy, the enthusiasm, that 
the dislike, the like, the it, it was all gone. The instant noise that came from a post or a hit, yeah. where I know we had the you know uh, the, the fake crowd noise and all of that, and never, they did never it. again, please, never again. No. And listen, the in arena people did a good job trying yep. to put it, but there was always a delay, and sometimes it didn't have the impact that it would with fans, even when there was. 1,500 fans, 2,000 fans yeah. uh, in Montreal in the playoffs, yeah. right? In the finals. They got, you know, what, 2,000 fans? And it was like, man, this is so important to have by, them there. By the way, 2,000 fans. I know you're French, Marty. Do you guys have math up there? <laughs> there was about 6,000 fans in there. 2,000. I mean, like, come well, on. The doors stayed open. <laughs> oh, just by accident. Just by accident. <laughs> the people <laughs> came in. That's the way we work back home. Our doors are always open for Please people and friends and family to come oh. in. My goodness. 2,000 people. I was like, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, yeah, you know, this is a hard one because, uh, you know, for all the right reasons, <laughs> you're watching everything else going on in the league, and it's not like you can sit there and watch Buffalo every night. But do you, do you look at, like, one or two or three pieces for this team and think, 100%, these are the guys that they're going to to get what they need out of that is going to ultimately right this this ship well i will say we watch a lot more buffalo saber games since donnie became the head coach yeah it's yes. a little easier right yeah. so we're we've got uh, right now in our house we're big sabers and vancouver canucks fans mm -hmm. and i can say two years ago i was not a fan much of either <laughs> And so now that my brother-in-law coach is here and my wife is an assistant GM in Vancouver, we're really much more in tune with those teams. Yeah. Um, I look at the Sabres and, of course, the goaltending position stands out before anything. Mm -hmm. Now, the kid in Michigan is big and really good. Yeah. Uh, I know Devin Levi a little bit mm -hmm. uh, from the World Junior experience, and also he roomed with uh, my son Landon at the Olympics, and Landon said he's a, just a fantastic kid. Can we know why they didn't play him? Can you ask Landon why? Well, Landon, well, Landon also, played once. Yeah. He'd like to know, too. Uh, yeah, I know. And so uh, that might okay. be a conversation Let's get for back him. to the Sabres. Yeah. That's another and, thing. Uh, but yeah. Save it for the podcast. Yeah, I, we'll, I might have a take on it, too. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get into that. And so the, um, so the goaltending position, again, and you've got Lukanen, they're young. The problem is, like, who's – you've got to find somebody that can play for the next two years. Marty and I were just talking about oh. this on the, on the walk over here where I was lost. And um, we're, we're trying to – you know, you need to find a vet that can help stabilize yeah. the net while these young guys are getting their feet wet, right? And, and of course, it, like, again, I'm going to quote my brother-in-law again <clears throat> because he, I think he's so smart, but he's like, you, you know, goalies don't take longer really to develop than any other player. The problem is there's only one position. Mm -hmm. There's one net. Like, you could be a left winger. You could make the team five different ways. A goalie, you're either in or you're wearing a ball hat or you're in the American League. You, you need games. You can't get them here. You've got to get them there. So Owen Power, you guys are going to love mm -hmm. as soon as he shows up. Um, he's going to need to uh, find a little bit of an engine to his game because he's not had to have it because he's the best player. He's a monster. He's six foot five. He skates um, with an ease. Um, you remember how Jay Bowmeister skated? Mm -hmm. That's what Owen Power looks like to me. He's like, he, Bowmeister never looked like he tried. And then you'd go, oh, 27 minutes. Mm -hmm. You did it again. broke a sweat. Yeah, did it again. And, yeah. and Power is more dynamic maybe offensively, but like, it, like his ease of minutes. So just think, now you've got a left side of Dalene and Samuelson and Power. Mm -hmm. They're all giants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's part of it. You've got Jack Quinn that's <clears throat> going to be a terrific scorer, I think, mm -hmm. right? And, and, you, and you say, I think, because you still got to get here and, and see it. Um, J.J. Paterka, I know from a couple of world championships, and he played in the German League against Landon. Yeah. And um, that kid's an engine. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he will, you, you guys will really like him. So you ask for two or three pieces. They're all there. Now, how many first-rounders this year? Three? Three. Three. Yeah. So what if you really knock it out of the park on two of them? Right? If you get the right pick, it, like the top of the draft this year, mm -hmm. there's a half a dozen guys that are difference makers. A couple yeah. of defensemen. Um, Juracek is a, <clears throat> is a check. 
player, a big right-handed physical guy. Uh, Nemec is a smaller uh, Slovak. Man, he can move the puck. Uh, they got that giant Slovak forward who led the Olympics in goals, yeah. Slavkowski. Slavkowski. He's 17. He's six foot four. Yeah. Yeah. Then you got Shane Wright and Logan Cooley is a, a U.S. center who I just saw twice at the World Juniors. I'm that kid is good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the players will come fast. It's just the development part that each player is going to get there at a different time. You got anything else, Farm? Uh, that was that was good. I think we bottled that up and we show it on billboards to all of our fans. Like you've got more than three pieces. You got six, seven pieces. You could have a couple more. Uh, it's just gonna take time. It's hard for the fan base and and for some of us too to think. Well, time. Where has it been? Like it's been 11 years. But you know what? The, so from the outside, it's easy to look at that. You guys that have lived here, and have lived this, and you played it, when. This building is full. It is not a fun place to come in and play. Well, it's a great what, place to play as a home team. That's me what I mean. <laughs> when when the we would come to the odd, everybody would talk about you know the Boston Garden. Mm -hmm. I go, yeah, I hate the odd. It, it, the Sabers were big and mean, and and it was loud and small. And then we came here, and you'd come in here and. Ray and Barnaby would be running all <laughs> over the place, and Michael Pecka would clobber somebody from, yeah. you know, and then we'd get down, if we could ever get to the net, you guys were in it, and we couldn't score there either. Like, it was a miserable place to play. Yeah, and, and in the, in the like, yeah. mid-2000, it was, uh, we outscored everybody because yeah. we had yeah. Breer and Drury yeah. and all these guys scoring goals. We gotta it's, go, Marty. It's not I know, far. we gotta take a break. It's not that far, guys. I'm telling you. Yeah. I know it's 10 years, yeah. but it's not that far. Hey, thanks for reaching Brian, out a few weeks ago. Uh, it's not, yeah, nice to, nice to reconnect. Get back to your lunch. Go get dessert. Yeah, exactly. Ice cream, something. <laughs>